plant oh. statue thing. Oh, isn't it? It doesn't drink any water. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our neighbors gave it to me for Christmas <laughs> last year. Okay. Excuse me, because she knows that I like plants, but I'm terrible at taking... Not, I'm, I'm not terrible at taking care of them. Sometimes I don't have the capacity to take care of something else in the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, great, I have to feed all of us and the plants. <laughs> Stupid plants. They're gonna all die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're already recording my whole spiel <laughs> on plants. We hear topics from politics, social media, academia, friends and family. You wonder about yours and their mentality. Our thoughts and actions aren't in conjunction and realize there may be an obstruction. The sky appears a different shade of blue when we realize we may be in the shadow of an eclipsed view. It's just like the yeah. regular conversation. It's kind of funny how people get nervous. Oh, uh, the first few I was too. You too? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but now I have liquid courage. <laughs> His name is Jose. All right. Here we go. All right. Welcome to Eclipse Views, where we take difficult topics and try to identify what's blocking your view, try to unlearn and rewash, possibly rewire our brains since we don't seem to have much luck changing other people's views, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was looking at something. I was Laura looking at the candle. Down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some disclaimers. Some hard and difficult topics. If you are easily offended, this may not be for you. There are sometimes some hard truths, and if you're not ready for it, I suggest maybe revisit at a later time when you feel more prepared. Um, this one I made it now kind of optional. If you want to introduce. Uh, your skilled areas pretty much we used to try to save it towards the end as to what we do or whatever as to not really form a bias for the listeners or whatever mm-hmm. but a lot of times it ended up that people couldn't help but bring up something from either work or their skills or something I think we should that. clarify on that though with skilled areas okay uh, your profession mm-hmm. well sometimes it's not always your profession you can still have skills some, some, in that. well Stupid tequila. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up to you if you guys want to um, say that or not. But um, we will say that we. How long have we known them? You've known them. I've known Laura since high school. Well, actually, we didn't even introduce ourselves. So again, oh. <laughs> I'm Sam Melendez. I'm Veronica Melendez. And our guests today are. Laura Galindo. And Jacob Galindo. <laughs> All right. So, again, optional if you'd like to say what you do or not. We're both librarians. Mm, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. All right. And, um, all right. So, yeah, I, I, I was saying that since we don't want, want to skew the, the listener, I guess. It's up to them if they want to, or even you guys if you want to. Um, I don't know how your biases are, but um, we're all humans, pretty much citizens, colleagues, professionals, consumers, friends, family members, teachers, learners, just human beings first. So how long have you known, Laura? Oh, I stopped mathing. I stopped mm-hmm. mathing. It's Since been uh, t- what year? 21 years. Since what year? 2001. <laughs> and then... Well, you guys have known me the same amount of time. Huh? Well, they know, they've know they known me Yeah, we've known you since... Um, 2014? 2014. Yeah. Our wedding is when we mm-hmm. met you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Laura text, can I bring a date? And I was like, a date? <laughs> Little did we know that she was going to marry the dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I got curious about all this through street epistemology which is a mode of Socratic questioning figuring out how you came to a stance that you believe Uh, are those reasons legitimate enough to continue to hold that stance or is it just conjecture which is forming an opinion based on incomplete information how do you know when you have enough evidence to form an opinion and today's topic is respect and etiquette so usually we start off with a few scenarios. Um, 
and I'll give you a scale as to see where you land on that scenario. And then um, pretty much we come back to it at the end to see if your scale moved at all. If you, if you think you have changed your mind a little bit or, or stayed the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes? All right. First scenario. Somebody you think highly of gives you constructive criticism about your craft or skill. On a scale of one to a hundred, how do you receive this criticism? See, zero being very poorly or a hundred being very good. Try to go with gut instinct. Don't think about it too much because we'll come back to it or we'll discuss it a little bit and see if that helped at all or not. Um, you want to go first? Yeah, I'd say <laughs> around 90% if it's somebody that I respect or admire or if they're... Think highly of. Yeah, I think highly of and they give me constructive criticism. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take what they say into account. All right. So yeah, 90%. 90? All right. Laura? I think I'd say the same because I'm used to that <laughs> because I've been in music and performing all my life. Before I was a librarian. Music. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and teaching. So basically, as, as a performer, you have to take constructive criticism all the time. <laughs> so. All right. Little? I think I'm at an 85. Um, even when I like look up to the person or whatever, I'm kind of like... I'm going to question it <laughs> mm -hmm. just to to make sure. It depends on, you know, for me it depends on what they're giving me constructive criticism on too, mm -hmm. depending on what their field is. Even if I admire this person or think right. highly of them, I'm still going to... I was imagining a coworker or a colleague who mm -hmm. is in the same position as me. If it's somebody else that I think highly of, but they're not in the same field or whatever, then yeah, I'd probably lower. It's like an 80, 85, because it's like, you don't know what I do, even though I respect you. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was with me. That's why I gave yeah. it an 85. I think 85 is fair for me, too. I'll go with 85. All right, scenario two. It's pretty much... Look at that sneaky little face. Pretty much the same thing, but now somebody you don't think highly of gives you constructive criticism about your craft or skill. On the same scale, how do you receive this criticism? Zero being very poorly or 100 being very good? <laughs> you want to go first? Um, <laughs> probably... Oh, I don't know. I mean... I guess I would take that what they said into account, but I don't know, maybe like a 50%? I was going to say 30 or 40. Like if it's somebody that I don't think like highly of. or respect or think highly of, and they're basically telling me how I should do my job, even if they're being respectful and trying to be constructive I'll just be like yeah I mean I'll take it with a grain of salt like maybe they have a point but um be less likely to take it to heart especially if it's somebody I don't think highly of yeah I'm at about a 20 that's being generous <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd probably be pretty low around there too I was going to say 20 originally, too. Good God. I think 20 is almost high for me right there. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, like, real-life situations, yeah. and I'd probably be like, no, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and be real low. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to leave it at a 20, because I'm feeling happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, kind of on the same scale, how important is this to you, or re respect the topic for today? How important is respect to you? Zero being not very much, or a hundred being very important. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I'd say maybe a fifteen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that was good instinct. It's all right. No, 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 no. I'd say like ninety, ninety-five, a hundred. Like I don't know. I think having respect for people, like, goes very. I mean, I think that's 
I think society would be a lot more civilized if everyone truly treated everyone else with respect and dignity instead of othering them, make like thinking less than of other people. Like inherently you're not thinking they are worthy of respect, even if you're playing at lip service. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's, and just or more personally, just like manners, like being respectful towards people. Even if it's someone like, okay, I don't agree with that person, but yeah, I can still make an effort. So, I don't know, yeah, I'd say 9,500. Okay. Laura? Yeah, I think respect is a, a big thing with me as well. Um, I'd say... I'd say about, yeah, I'd say 85%. Middle? I think 85 also. I'm going to go with 80. All right. Um, Merriam-Webster defines respect as a high or special regard to someone or something. And then etiquette is defined as the conduct or procedure required by good breeding or prescribed by authority to be observed in social or official life, which was very, was a very fascinating <laughs> definition for me. I didn't know that definition. Yeah. That bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> that really, that genuinely bothered me. Uh, Can you read right. it again? Yes. So etiquette is the conduct or procedure required by good breeding or, or prescribed by other... <laughs> or prescribed by authority to be observed in social or official life. Good breeding. That's the part that bothered me. <laughs> Good yeah. breeding? Okay. Because I'm an AKC animal now. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you must sit astute at the table. That shit bothered me. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's the original. That, that's Etiquette. The original. I mean, it still worked. Like, they still practice that, right? Like yeah. in... Mm-hmm. Like with the queen. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, <sighs> why? Why did you choose this topic? Um, I chose this topic because I think showing respect to others is important. I think that is very important. Um, it doesn't bother me as much as it used to uh, if people don't show me respect because, I don't know, I'm a very loyal person and mm-hmm. I'll show anybody respect and if they don't show it back, like, I can let it roll off me, whereas it used to bother me a lot. Do you think that teaching changed you in that? Like, was that what changed you? Or was it what what changed you? I think mostly teaching, yeah. Mostly teaching. Um, I mean, I've been through stuff like that in other areas of my life. uh, Like family and things like that. But I think it's... I think those have... Those situations have toughened me up. Mm -hmm. Um, but I always make note of it. I mean, if, you know, somebody doesn't show me respect, okay, I'm going to smile and nod and I'm not going to trust you anymore. So I, you know, it's, I don't know, but, <clears throat> but I think it's important. I think it's important for, for people to show respect to each other. Jacob, anything? No, yeah, I think. Like I said, respect is really important, but more thinking about it more, like I think there's a difference between like, oh, I respect this person, I think highly of them, versus I don't respect them at all, but that doesn't mean I'm going to treat them like garbage, like even if they are a garbage person or if they don't show me respect. Like I think it kind of ties into etiquette, not the stuffy etiquette definition, but just like, all right, I'm going to be cordial cordial and polite even if this person sucks. (laughs) And like they don't respect me or I don't respect them. Like in terms of they're sloppy or unprofessional or they're just a jerk like yeah okay. you suck but I'm not going to disrespect you like publicly or dislike 
treat you like garbage. Vanny, it's just like cordial. Like, okay, I don't need to be in your life. Like, we're not friends, but if I see you, like, oh, okay, we'll be professional. I'm not gonna slam the door in your face, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna be overly like. I'm just gonna be like, oh, okay. I think it also lends itself to our professions too, because librarians and teachers were kind of in the profession of. Well, I, I guess the librarian's more customer service, mm-hmm. right? And he's better at that than I am. <laughs> he's better at customer service than I am, but... Um, he's been doing it longer than you. Yeah. But also, it's like, I can put on a friendly face no matter what I'm thinking about you. <laughs> you know? So, and that's with teachers, too. I mean, we all it's kind of like putting on an act, you know? Like... On that note, guys, <laughs> is it necessary... Is what necessary? Oh, putting on an act? Is it necessary to treat these people with the utmost respect if they are an asshole, per se, to you? Maybe not the utmost respect, but, like, I'm not going to go low. I'm not going to show you utter disrespect, just, like, the bare minimum. But you can also put somebody (laughs) in their place Hmm. tactfully and with respect. You know what I mean? I'm really bad at that. I'm going to show you what I think of you. Mm Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but this is why this is good because I'm <laughs> learning from y'all. <laughs> you're you're changing my mind already. It makes me want to be a better person. But jeez, because it's been it's been an interesting transition for me. Because and I've only been a librarian for four weeks, <laughs> but I've had to deal with teachers too. I've had to deal with adults now. So yeah, I can put on a happy face, but I can also tell you firmly what you know. No, your technology is not ready right now. It's going to be ready in like two weeks. <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> so I can do that, you know. <laughs> and the students, of course, you know, I'm more strict with, but, but like, you know, the little ones, the little ones, and you do, you like, no matter what you're thinking, you can still be respectful and tactful about it. I can, and mm-hmm. still firm. <laughs> oh man. Y'all are, good, y'all are good people. <laughs> Just flat out. Yeah. Better than y'all are me, good people. No, for sure. You guys are way better than me. Because, yeah, there's... I guess I still weigh the options. Like, how much... Not necessarily disrespect. Mm-hmm. Can I get away with... Like, yeah. if, if somebody, like, did it... To, like, I, I don't think I would do it first, or at least intentionally mm-hmm. like it usually comes from someone else first like yeah. if i felt like they were being aggressive or disrespectful towards yeah. me or something but usually more in an aggressive manner than then i'm probably going to retaliate and probably in a manner that is going to be non tactful <laughs> no not even non tactful but that's what i'm saying that i would weigh the options like how much can i weigh if i go too far then there's going to be way more consequences than i'm willing to deal with yeah mm-hmm. but i'll raise it up a little just so you know i'm not really happy with you mm-hmm. yeah. so don't kind of pretend either and that's why i can't do the put on a happy face like you're going to know i'm pissed off about this yeah well, but Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's so pretty much that. <laughs> I, I, you're going to know I'm pissed off about it, but I'm not going to fake the, the happy face thing. So how do you do? How do you discipline your kids then, your students? <laughs> oh, they know when he's pissed. <laughs> pretty much. Like, this year, I guess it hasn't been as... Like, they, they've been okay. Mm-hmm. But I guess usually it was like 80% of the time. Like, you, you already know this. Like, why are we doing this again? Like, and the... Uh, with the students, actually, it's not too bad. Like, I did, mm-hmm. I think, I don't know what I did different last year, but for whatever reason, they did seem to start responding a little better. And since I have a lot of repeats still, mm-hmm. they're, they're okay. The rapport is already built. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, and I guess I never really worry with students too much. I worry more with adults, which is like what <laughs> Ben always says, like, how do you deal with kids it's like I'd rather deal with kids than adults like mm-hmm. kids have mm-hmm. kids have an excuse I guess yeah. <laughs> and you see like to me working with adults uh, because you catch well in my profession when I would work with um, individuals who are 
very ill and they don't feel good. They don't feel like talking, getting up out of bed, doing whatever they need to do Mm -hmm. to get better, right? And I would have to cultivate that rapport with them. And what Mm -hmm. I liked about adults is you can be real because they have felt all of those emotions before. They have dealt with that. Like, they know. Mm -hmm. And, like, you just tell them, like, look, I'm trying to get my job done to help you. Mm -hmm. And you do it firm. And my faces are... (laughs) They're tells. Like, I can't hide my... Ow, that thing is fucking hot. What the... Oh, sorry, <laughs> viewers, listeners. I just burnt myself on the iPad. Oh, that's weird. The metal, like, touched me and it was like, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> I'm going to leave a mark on my table. <laughs> 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 um, very easily distracted. My faces are tells. So you know, like, if I'm not scripted mm-hmm. and I'm raw, you're going to know what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. You're going to know if I'm mad. You're going to know if I'm happy. Mm-hmm. And and I can't be like, oh, you're going to do this, you know, because then yeah. it's just utter sarcasm from me. And so I'd rather be real with them, including my words. And yes, I do state, I'm like, hey, like even with, with Xavier sometimes, I'm like, no, that's not okay because you're not, suppo- you're not supposed to be talking back. Mm-hmm. Like I understand that this is how you're feeling, but this is how you make me feel. Mm-hmm. And like I am... I'm not telling him through my teeth, like right. smiling, because then to me it feels fake. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna be fake with anybody. I'm pretty real. Like if a patient is 15 minutes late and I'm like, you're 15 minutes late, you are wasting my time. Mm-hmm. If I do it, oh, hi, it's okay, you know, just next time don't do that. No, I am here for you. You mm-hmm. utilize my time efficiently. And if you don't want to, we do not have to do this. But don't waste my time. You know, even even though both of you say you're more raw and and you show more what you're thinking, nothing that you're telling me is disrespectful. I mean, the way you respond to people is not disrespectful. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, oh, thank you. <laughs> all of that, you know, it, it, you don't... Yeah, and I guess... What's say maybe like we're not in those extreme situations often, but right. I guess if mm-hmm. if I would be then and also like I kinda have I'm saying, often. <laughs> and even how you said how do I deal with it with the students is I think one thing I've learned is is like this isn't personal, like this is mm-hmm. whatever rule you broke this rule. Like a lot of times I didn't make up the rule, like sometimes I do, but mm-hmm. like you broke this rule, you knew so there has to be a consequence like mm. it's, it's like I don't know try to make it as as um, un, unbiased also as like mm-hmm. touching a fire or like mixing vinegar and baking soda it's not taking it personal because you're whatever like like oh I don't like you so I'm going to have this reaction no like this is cause and effect you did this this is going to happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. simple as that yeah it's still professional though yeah right. it's still respectful I think <clears throat> So I think being respectful isn't necessary. Depending on the situation, it's not like necessarily putting on an act or like lying th- or smiling through your teeth. That's not necessarily. I mean, maybe if it's you really need to diffuse a situation, but it's okay if the person knows. Yeah, I'm pissed off right now, but you could still be respectful. I think it descends into disrespect when. Yeah, I'm pissed off right now, but I'm going to lash out at you to make sure you know how I'm upset. Like, I don't know. So I think respect is like, all right, like I'm firmly letting you know this was not cool. This is not okay. Mm-hmm. By doing whatever you're doing, that's disrespecting me, but I'm not going to retaliate. By doing the same thing to you, I'm just letting you know, hey, this that's not cool. Um, and that's, I think that's still respectful. It's not, it's like yeah. Laura said, like professional or... That's very tactful. Polite. Still. Yeah, yeah, it's still tactful yeah. as opposed to like just losing your shit. And then, you know, none of us are perfect. Sometimes you're going to lose your mm-hmm. shit and... But, like you said, also, it's not like we're in those situations all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, else? I'm wondering about the etiquette stuff. Are we going to get into that? Because that was a whole other thing with that definition. Um, yeah, I guess we get into it in a, in a little bit. Um, still with, I guess, even... Well, I guess... Yeah, let's talk about etiquette a little bit. What... What, uh... <clears throat> 
what were your first thoughts as, as you guys heard that definition? Well, because you chose that one too, right? And then we combined. So yeah. what was the I had talk, two talk to us about ones. that? And I honestly actually did have a little, like sometimes I'll put a little blurb, blurb as to what made me think of this. Mm-hmm. And for the respect one, I actually had, I was actually playing soccer with the students. Mm-hmm. And I was, be, I was the goalie. But it was interesting how differently they were treating me versus like any other student playing goalie or whatever and I was like mm-hmm. interesting like mm-hmm. I guess kind of why like you like not, not 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 really why but you don't know my experience as a soccer player so why would you respect me anymore as a yeah. soccer player versus like as a teacher or because a player, you've right? got the power yeah I guess. Yeah. You're an they adult. kicked me in the face <laughs> and now you're suspended <laughs> Because you're still an authority figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the respect level is completely different. The way you respect a peer as to how you would respect an authority figure. Mm-hmm. And... Co-workers and a boss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose so. And etiquette, I honestly don't Sorry. remember why, but <clears throat> I will always say, even based on this definition, I've always been kind of pretty strongly against etiquette. Mm-hmm. Or, like... I don't know, a lot of times it just seems so pointless, like maybe it served a purpose at once and then we continued it because it was some sort of tradition, tradition. but mm-hmm. it really doesn't, like a lot of times it doesn't feel like it serves the same purpose and I'm like, what the, like why are we still doing this? Why is this now counting as disrespectful? Like I, I can see disrespectful as you being aggressive or something for something I did or didn't do <laughs> but now with with etiquette that's when I feel like somebody's being aggressive towards me for some etiquette rule that I broke and I was like that doesn't seem unwarranted or I mean that does that does seem does unwar- not seem warranted. yeah it does not seem warranted like like I don't know I, I, I can't even like I guess elbows on the table like being one of those like kind of pretentious like yeah. dinner table type ones yeah, and then somebody's that. gonna get aggressive at me like no take your elbows off the table like I feel like that's an aggression thing towards me and like yeah I feel like it's being more of a judge of character for putting my elbows on the table and I'm like no now <laughs> you've kind of lost my respect for that for Ye- something right. kind of stupid I think for that definition of etiquette yeah it's stupid as hell like over those kinds of things and if you're really into that okay but then you could be like Oh, I'm sorry. Could you please not put your elbows on the table? Okay, okay. but like I don't know. I thought the like in the topic list. I don't. I don't know if it was etiquette. I thought it said something about good manners. It's uh, etiquette and manners. Oh, it ma- yeah. Mm-hmm. So like manners, that's different. Like yeah, be have, mm-hmm. have your manners. Like be respectful. Like having and have a baby. Like I want my baby. I want my little girl to have manners to, to people. But that's different than you know. You have to like properly. You know, have the different forks and spoons, like you know, like that. Yeah. Shit's yeah, confusing, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like I always end up feeling really awkward. I'm like inside as... out, outside in. Well, <laughs> well yeah. even I'm gonna be judged for it. And I guess what what do you guys? Because when I looked up etiquette, one of the synonyms was manners, and that's why mm, I just cut right. out manners for it. So yeah, I was like, okay. Right, right. And mm-hmm. so, uh, what do you guys have a difference in what etiquette or manners are? I think I do. Yeah. Go ahead. You guys can go. Go for it. Well, when I when I saw that topic, I I did lean more toward manners uh-huh. because, yeah, etiquette. You think oh, at a table, mm-hmm. it's set correctly. Or I guess to sit there prim and proper. I think anything that not just table table etiquette, but any kind of etiquette, depending like on the male situation. female mm-hmm. etiquette also. Yeah, right? no, that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what about the one that you have to stand up when the woman gets to the table? I think that one's funny. (laughs) There was this one party or something that I had gone to. I was uh, with somebody. And uh, I got to the table from going to the restroom and all the men stood up. And I was like, the fuck? Going, I was like, do I stay standing or like? I would have played with them, walked out, and walked in. Oh my gosh! I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on, and I was like, I'm gonna test this again. I have to go to the restroom uh, again. Uh, so I went, and then boop, everybody's <laughs> <laughs> so weird. But I do think it's polite when, I mean, the man and woman roles, like that doesn't matter. But like, I do think it's polite if somebody offers to open your door. 
You know, like mm-hmm. we're going in the store. I'll open the door for a man. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, that's yeah, matters. Think that's yeah, they think that's the difference. And, and the difference, mm-hmm. yes, exactly, but between manners and etiquette. Now, mm-hmm. like it's nice to have that. Would you expect it? Well, probably. I mean, it, it, it depends. <laughs> like if, if they're like right, if they notice you're right behind, right, you and they don't, okay. and it slams in your face, it's like, oh, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that's funny. Like going to etiquette, though. Like yeah, like social <laughs> etiquette. Yeah, that's all bullshit. But I guess for certain kinds of etiquette, like. In a professional setting, like meetings or like business things, professional, like yeah, there's certain etiquette, like things you have to follow. I guess that's a little different, and that's not like prim, proper, stuffy, blue. Well, I guess stuff. even then, would you have an example for that? For like, I don't know. I guess just like, because uh, I'm part of a Texas Library Association. Like, there's like there's different rule, like uh, roundtable rules or like um, um, council meetings, like. The like what, like, Robert's Rule of Order, like running meetings, like we call things into session. See, like, and, those are so gross. See, and even <laughs> even, I may ruffle some feathers with uh-huh. freaking the, some of the listeners or whatnot, but like stuff like that, like in I'm sure it happened. It's supposed to happen in real life, but like uh, I see it in TV shows with with courtroom stuff when yeah. all rise for the judge. Yeah, no, that that's, shit drives me nuts. Right, like no, I yeah, would that's... not want to. Like I have. This serves no purpose. Like no, this is it me standing or sitting does not impede you from doing your job. It doesn't make you right. a clearer, more focused judge or anything. Like it just doesn't. No. So and, like for that stuff, it's not like I meant like um, it kind of also deals with the spec. Like basically, I guess a simple thing is like people having turns talking okay. and like things like that. Not like oh okay, we all gotta sit down yeah. and rise. No, that's bullshit. Yeah, I've always I've always thought that was weird. Like all rise. Like wh- why? And, you, who are you? To- and mm-hmm. to a further extent, like even the national anthem, like yeah. taking off your hat, standing up, like the flag. The it's an inanimate. The flag doesn't care yeah, that, that I'm standing. The flag doesn't care that I have a hat on. Maybe the the soldiers or whatever whatever represents our country or whatnot. That's different, but even then, again, how does this impede you from doing your job, whether I stand up or have a hat on and I recite the pledge or the national anthem? Like, this isn't mm-hmm. making your job any easier or more efficient or more effective. It doesn't... I don't I don't get it. Oh, I, I do it just because I think... Again, <laughs> that's one of those reasons that, like, yeah. me disrespecting is probably going to have more backlash that I'm willing to deal with, but doesn't mean I agree with it, like... I think I've always had a complicated relationship with that. Like, sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, you got to do that. And other times it's like, why? But I think part of it is also respect, like, they're showing respect. Like, for, sol- like for okay, soldiers, I guess. Like, okay, yeah, but you're right. Like, the flat, like, what, what, why, why do I have to stand? I mean, I guess it's partly respect, but also, I guess it's we- I guess it's considered disrespectful if you're sitting down for yeah. a national anthem but it, or a pledge I don't know okay pledge of allegiance that's something I've always it's never sat really well with me <laughs> at all but, yeah I, uh, but, I still uh, don't even like I think it's hard because it's such a socially accepted thing that it feels weird to even go against it yeah. but like I honestly don't get it if you really try to dissect it I'm like I don't understand this like why why does it I, like I could see the arguments for standing for the national anthem or standing or kneeling or whatever, but uh, not the the pledge of allegiance and then the Texas pledge. Like wh- what? Why? But that's <laughs> I don't know. Well, even the Texas like the kneeling, like I thought it was even probably even more fascinating that you're feeling so like disrespected for yeah, if anything, another bodily position right. like when if I anything, stood on my hands like, does that count as disrespectful you could argue or, that is respectful because kneel, you're kneeling like yeah. that's what, you, what do you what you kneel to what more respect do you want right what do you want you kneel to higher powers or I don't know like yeah. more so uh, it's I don't know it's so but, sometimes, but then there are sometimes people who just want to be pissed just to be pissed so yeah. I don't know sorry we kind of <laughs> yeah we're hard over yeah we <laughs> do you guys have any <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. I respect the people that have given their lives for our country. I respect the people that fight for our country. Um, And if 
that so far from speaking to a lot of soldiers that we know, um, it seems it's almost like 50-50. <laughs> Some of them feel disrespected by people kneeling. Some of them feel like they don't really care if somebody's kneeling. It's their personal thing, like whatever. That's what I fought for was your right to do whatever you think is, it's your freedom. I fought for your freedoms. And if you care to kneel for what I have done, then that's your freedom that I've given you kind of thing, you know? So it goes, it, it's very much like that to me. So I don't know. Um, I would not, I agree with Sal, there's too much backlash in it. So I would just follow along with yeah, it because like... that's what we've been bred to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, that is etiquette. Yeah. That's not manners. Manners, I feel like, is more of a, uh, an interpersonal thing. I'm not going to belch at the table without covering my <laughs> mouth in the presence yeah. of other people because yeah. the smell may affect. Yeah, that's right? That's why you do that. Direct. I'm not going to cough or to sneeze ugh, just like blatantly like that. I'm going mm -hmm. to turn my head because I have manners and mm -hmm. I want to respect the other people that are around me. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, which fork I decide to eat with, does that really affect the person sitting next to me? Mm -hmm. Right. Or does it just affect my mouth? Mm -hmm. Right? So I think that there's where I'm seeing the difference. That's where I feel the difference in respecting another person the way that with utilizing either manners, uh, etiquette is questionable for me. That's a good definition. Yeah, etiquette is more. Yeah, well, because manners one? affects other people. Mm -hmm. right. That's it's how I'm feeling like, it. Yeah. Like you said, opening the door, like, <laughs> they're mm -hmm. going to, like, especially right behind them, you're yeah. going to walk right into it. And yeah, that's, that has a really close effect <laughs> right Did, after the occurrence or whatever. But And speaking uh, um, on that, first off, I think El Paso is a very different animal. Mm -hmm. I think that the people here in El Paso have very different manners and etiquette from a lot of other places that I visited, right? Um, the other day we went to the movies and my manners or etiquette, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, is to hold the door for a person if they are on their way out. Yeah. I mm -hmm. figure they just wash their hands, they're nice and clean, they don't want to touch the door. I've already touched the door, it's disgusting, and I'm gonna go <laughs> and I'm gonna end up washing my hands anyway. Uh -huh. So. It was one of the girls who worked there, and she had just finished washing her hands, and she was turning around looking at her hair and stuff, and so I was like, okay, so I had the door open, and then I was like, well, she's busy, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to let it go, and then she went and she grabbed the door, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so <laughs> sorry, uh -huh. and I apologized to her because I didn't keep the door open. Mm -hmm. Those are my matters, mm -hmm. right? And she's like, oh, no, no, it's okay. And I was like, what in the hell? I just apologized for not like <laughs> holding the door. But it's because I went against my own uh, values. Or I don't know what you want to call it, right? I think values is too big of a word for that. Um, a little less than values. But like it's something that I find to be helpful. Right. right? And so if somebody's going to do that, I appreciate when they do that for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to expect them to do that for me because some people can be assholes or mm -hmm. maybe they're not even trying to be a butt. You know, they're just in their own world. They mm -hmm. have their own thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But do I like when they do it? Absolutely. Do I get mad when they don't? Um, secretly. <laughs> I'm like, you asshole. <laughs> you couldn't get the door. Me too. <laughs> but I'm not going to be like, hey, asshole, you didn't get the door. I'm right. not going to do that. I'm not. That's it's I'm not even drinking when I do that. <laughs> um, but is it appreciated? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are things like as a woman um, that my parents had taught me that didn't quite make sense until like I started dating. And then it was like, well, if he opens the door for you, you lean over and you open his door. This is back in the day, guys. Do you remember when we had like the flip thing? Like you didn't, mm -hmm. this is like way, way back when. So it was customary for my parents to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't an electric opening the car or like all doors <laughs> open. Yeah. It was like you have to pull up the little thingy, the, yeah. Poop, yeah. the lock. Mm -hmm. Like when you got out of the car, you had to lock your actual door. Yeah, or my, else... my first car was like that. You know? And so... Um, Again, this is before cell. 
Mm-hmm. I was dating this guy, and he had one of those cars, too. And so he let me in the door, and I opened it, and he's like, oh, my God, you're the first woman who has ever done that. And I was like, what's wrong with our other bitches? <laughs> you know? <laughs> they don't have old parents. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and then, um, so Sal's first car, like, he would open the door for me, and I would lean over and open his door, like, without question there's only i think one time that i think i like forgot or something how dare you (laughs) and you're like what the fuck why didn't you open my door and i was like oh it's expected huh just kidding (laughs) i don't really remember but (laughs) i don't remember that (laughs) yeah i did anyway um so i think that those are the differences between manners and etiquette and how you can utilize them to the benefit of other people you know like Mm -hmm. etiquette i don't well, it makes me question. Like, if we were to go to another country, would we follow their etiquette and manners? No, would we know? Would we know? Yeah. I don't think we would know. I think we would know real quickly. No. Well, yeah. Or wouldn't it be respectful of an individual to look it up before they went? Mm. Yeah. I would think so. I think, yeah. I would want to know. Yes and no. We... But I guess sometimes, like, how would... I feel like sometimes the ways you end up getting in trouble is like something you like super random that you wasn't even on your radar. Yeah. So it's like, how would I even have known to, to look, look this up? up? Yeah. yeah, like what? Mm-hmm. You now pissed off because at me for internet. something that I have. Yeah, yeah, but even then, like yeah, again, if it's something super them. random, like how would I oh. know that this is this is even a thing? Like I don't know, man. There's so I feel like that nowadays. I feel like it could be used. That's just an excuse. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that it yeah. is, but I think that with all of the technology that we have, like we have Google, we have TikTok, we have Snapchat around mm-hmm. the world, like you have access to see all of these countries, their customs, the way that they expect you to eat their food. I know that in like, well, I don't even know where exactly because I'm not going there anytime soon, mm-hmm. but I think it might be in China, but it's to slurp the food. Mm-hmm. Right? China or Japan, I forget. Um, to me... I hate that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I I hate messy, loud eating. Mm-hmm. It bothers me. Like, to my wits' ends, it mm-hmm. bothers me so much. But that's part of our etiquette, right? Our, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Because, I, because I still am around a lot of people who eat the way I don't like, mm-hmm. out of respect, and I'll say shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, mm, my God. <laughs> right? Like, it drives me insane. But out of respect, my manners say, don't say anything. Mm-hmm. Right? But if I'm going to go to another country, would I look that up? Well, like you said, even if you don't, you'll find out real quick. Like, I kind of oh. think so. Because you would see the other people. You would hear them. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're observant, right? Yeah. If you're mm-hmm. looking for that or you're at a restaurant and they're like, no. Or they slap your hand and you're like, oh, <laughs> shit, okay. <laughs> Wrong chopsticks. Mm-hmm. You know, or something. I don't know. But I don't know. I feel like there's so much information out there. But I understand what you're saying, like a random one. Yeah, I... But I would kind of want. I I kind of want to just like. Hmm, you want me to do it your way? Then tell me. <laughs> mm, yeah. And I I think well, and I I guess it depends on where you go because. Some people of other cultures will be more forward about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Telling you what you should be not doing. I know. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. And mm-hmm. so. They're in that situation, kind of like with our scenarios. That's constructive criticism. How do you take it? Do you take it? A, Above a 50 or below a 50. <laughs> right. Because it, it comes with respect of other cultures. Yeah. Well, if it's a stranger and they're being somewhat respectful, respectful it's like, oh, oh, my bad, I didn't know. And, yeah. But see, that that's respectful in their country, is to help each other out. Yeah. Right? Help each other know what not to do and what to do. I think I would still get butt hurt <laughs> just because that's the person I am. I'd be like, oh, I did it wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> and... My inner bitch would be like on my ass about it. I mean, like, oh, you just don't know how to do anything. Oh. Uh, right? Uh-huh. But learning, that's how you learn, mm-hmm. is by making those mistakes or being corrected. Mm-hmm. You know, but like, I, I watch a lot of the Great British Baking Show and boy, they're on them. Really? Mm-hmm. And they don't cry. But I would have cried for <laughs> sure if they're like, hey, your sponges, whatever. And I'm like, Arr! and they're like, okay. 
but they're used to that. That's how their culture is, is yeah. to be very forward. Like, um, in American Idol, right? Like, Simon Cowell, when he would be, like, on them, he's like, no, you're too fat. Mm. And in his culture, that was okay. In American mm-hmm. culture, it's like, you, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how the respect changes in, d- depending on your culture, too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry. I keep going um, on tangents. No, it's okay. <laughs> Um, kind of next question is, I guess, what, how did you come to this stance or like this, what do you think are things that led up to you making respect to this level of importance to you? Like, is it your parents, your experiences, other things? What do you guys think like contributed to you? To your opinion, like being like, no, I think respect is this important. Um, <laughs> I think, I think with me, it's, I guess, been my experiences, um, because, and I know we've been talking about. This is a whole nother mm-hmm. tangent. Is that it's okay? okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like kind of like not on the um it is and it isn't but um just people not keeping their word i guess that's a big respect thing for me Mm -hmm. um because when i tell somebody something i'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. i'm going to do it um and like i said it doesn't it doesn't matter as much to me now but um it's still like a big thing for me and if somebody if somebody doesn't do what they say they're going to do or um, they let me down because they said they were going to do it mm-hmm. and it was an important thing, um, then I'm like, okay, all right. And I make a mental note. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel disrespected. Yeah. And I feel disappointed and jilted and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and like I said, not as much as I used to because then... You kind of come to, I guess, expect it sometimes. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so then you don't, you don't, you're not able to rely, rely on people, or you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think contributed to that? That you're, I guess, expecting it more, or like not making it as big a deal as before. What made you kind of less sensitive or mm-hmm. to that now? I think it's a protective me- mechanism um, because I'm very much that person. Like I, like I said, I will, whatever I say, I will do. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not going to do it, I don't say it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I think it is a protective me- mechanism because when I was younger, I was more sensitive and it would hurt me. And so as I got older, I'm like, I'm not going to let it hurt me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to expect, you know. To be disappointed. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean that that sounds awful. <laughs> no, 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 that really sounds it. awful, but. <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense, though. Mm-hmm. And other, yeah, I have a, I guess, kind of phrases like that for myself too. And when I tell people, they're also kind of like, it's like <laughs> but it's effective. Like yeah. it works. Like it's it done. <laughs> and I'm much more at peace than, mm-hmm. than, than probably what you are, because mm-hmm. you're still thinking. I don't know. But, yeah. I don't know how to put the nice spin on it that people want to hear, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree. Um, Jacob? Um, I don't know, I guess uh, parents, where I, was, where I was raised, experience, just observation, seeing how far respect goes, like just all around, like treating people with the, the base, bare respect. Like, again, even if it's someone you don't really like respect but you're gonna you show them that respect anyway like basic <clears throat> basic basic like politeness and manners just because it just a observational experience just like it just makes i don't say it makes sense it just makes things more civil civilized like we could live together we can coexist without killing each other or making needless drama you know we're not perfect sometimes Mm -hmm. we're gonna snap 
and sometimes it's warranted like okay that's just i can't deal with that massive disrespect so i'm going to be disrespectful back but i don't know i think a little bit of respect can go a long way and make it maybe the world a little bit more habitable more palatable and where does the line blur for you guys yeah that's Kind of part of the next. Oh, sorry. Question. No, it's okay. That's it. It's pretty like the whole purpose of this podcast is what would it take to change your mind? So, yeah, where is the line that you would probably say, okay, probably respect isn't as important as I think it is? Well, where is that? Or like how much disrespect? Because I, I think that that was really beautifully worded, what you just said. But. At the same time, like, those people are obviously pushing your boundary. So how far do you let a person push that you notify them? Look, mm -hmm. I've been nice to you. And I've been telling you this respectfully because I want civility. Mm -hmm. You're pissing me off. Mm -hmm. because I don't agree with this like where does that line where is that <laughs> teach me <laughs> because mine is like me personally I don't allow the person to I want them to know how they have made me feel well I think even that is respectful like it's not so much like again like I said earlier it's not like smiling and nodding until you break it's like mm -hmm. what you said like letting them know right it's still respectfully you can still respectfully tell them like you know what no you need to stop this isn't cool okay. like you're this isn't productive you're being you're being rude and disrespectful like that response in of itself is respectful now yelling at them or really snapping at them is what you want to avoid but i think actually yeah like smiling and nodding the more you ball it up yeah the more likely you're gonna explode mm -hmm. so I don't know, Veto, I think what, like, your tact of it, letting him know, like, tactfully, kind of respectfully, like, that, I don't appreciate you being 15 minutes late, you're wasting my time, you're wasting your time, that's cool, I think that's, and that should shut them down, like, oh, I didn't realize. But, but then, I guess, is there... A line? Yeah, like, well, okay, I, I would say, at what point, like, would you feel like, uh, like, oh, uh, like, shit, I'm gonna lose my cool and I'm not I, gonna be respectful right, anymore, like... I would say either physical violence or really like vitriolic verbal abuse whoa can yeah. you define that that was a really <laughs> fucking cool word that's gonna go on a t-shirt <laughs> i don't even know what you just said can you say that oh, again no, i guess just like it's a librarian i know <laughs> you guys are so smart no i just like as um if someone's like yelling at you or cussing at you or like being in your face like okay if it's in a professional setting even then it's like <laughs> if it's in a professional setting it's even like okay I really have to keep my cool but if it's not in a professional setting like whatever like hanging out with friends or in a public place and yeah if someone's being like that all up in your face or yelling you or pushing you yeah at that point it's like okay I'm going to defend myself or worse it's, it's done to somebody else like near you then it's like okay, nah I, we're going to throw hands or something because this is gonna... <laughs> what was the word that you Vitriol. 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 Like, just venom. Vitriolic? I don't even know if that's a word. Vitriol is. But just like, you know, just being an Vitriol. asshole. Like, or like malicious. Like, trying to get a rise out of you, like, on purpose. And it's like, all right, I'll if I'll play this game. If you're you know, being a real disrespectful jerk. Yeah. And it's funny, because a lot of this to me is like, in theory. Like, I've never had yeah. that happen to me personally. Like, no one's ever been screaming in my face. Or... I've had vitriolic individuals. Yeah, at that point, it's like, all right, either I'm going to walk away or I'm going to punch you in the face. But, <laughs> but I think it, I think he's right. Like it, de it depends on the environment. Mm -hmm. I think it depends because it's at your job. You're not like, all right, I'm going to drop this motherfucker. Like you, you probably should, <laughs> but I mean, unless you have to get fired. Yeah, but I guess even then, what would be the point? <laughs> that you, like, I'm sure it's happened to somebody that yeah. they're in a professional sense that and they, they have never. To. They never thought they'd be in that situation. Now, yeah. All of a sudden, you're there. There's the line. I'm about to cross this line, and <laughs> I mean, I never thought I would. <laughs> hopefully, oh, I peep, the powers that be understand. I don't yeah. know. Or there's you have some kind of backup. You're not alone. Someone can like 
either get do your, it for you. Do Just it kidding. for you or hold you back or something. <laughs> hold my earrings. <laughs> Oh my baby. Just kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That'd be funny if Laura said that right now. <laughs> oh my baby. <laughs> She's not out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, like I've never been in that bad a situation like professionally in my career. Or even personally. Like, me professionally and personally, like Honestly, I don't know how I would react. Would I be like, okay, I'm just going to walk away, or I'm just going to be like submissive, I don't want this to go any further, or is it, I'm gonna sna- or am I going to snap? And- well, okay, I have an example. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't sure how you were like, I couldn't tell how you were thinking about it, but, but this was not in a professional sense. This was okay. at a bar, and we were out with our friends, yes. and... Um, <laughs> It was at Rubik's? I think it was at Rubik's. And this guy approached me and my other female friend. I think you and her husband were getting us drinks or something. Oh, okay. You remember? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so... (laughs) This always happens. So he approached us and then me specifically, and he said... um, Well, he, he just, like, hit on me. And I said... Well, we have our husbands. Our husbands are over there. You know, they're getting us drinks. Sorry, guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, later in the night, we were actually walking out. And um, he, this guy was like, I think, okay, I think you guys were like a little bit behind us. Mm. And um, you don't remember this? Maybe maybe we're already drunk. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but he was like, um, the guy approached us again and he was like,